What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and I just want to apologize in advance if you hear any noise up there. My son is FaceTiming his grandparents, so could get a little loud. Just ignore it. I'm in the basement in a safe room with unloaded firearms by myself in my own house with my own legally owned firearms, right? But before we get started, hit the like button, drop a comment down below, tell me what you're carrying today, what kind of ammo, what kind of holster. Um, tell me your thoughts on this video, what kind of content you want to see, anything to help it get in the algorithm, that would mean a lot to me. But if you've never been here before, welcome. Um, something you're going to learn about me is that I love pocket carry. I think it's in a, something that every firearm owner should have. Even if you think you might not use it, or you might not utilize having such a small, tiny firearm, trust me, there will be a situation, for instance, going to the playground with your kids, right? And there's other anti-gunner, anti-2A parents there. And you go to lift your daughter up and put her on the monkey bars. And all of a sudden, whoop, there's your Smith & Wesson. Boop, there's your Hellcat. And now all of a sudden, oh my gosh, she's got a gun. Oh, it's this whole big chain reaction. Oh my gosh, she's got a gun. Even though it's holstered, you're not even doing anything with it. Oh my gosh. And that's just the type of thing that something like this can avoid. Deep concealment, going to areas where... You know, you're going to be active, uh, you know, doing a lot of physical activity and you want something tiny, light, but still something that can make you feel comfortable and safe at the same time and something you can still feel safe protecting your family with. So over here, something I've really gotten into is comparing different pocket pistols. And like I said, they're cheap, they're affordable, and they're very shootable if you learn to use them, right? The Diamondback DB9 Gen 4 might be the most snappy out of all my pocket pistols. But that is a 9mm um, version, which I'll get into a couple of these real quick. I'll introduce them. Taurus Spectrum, $200. Literally, it's a Taurus. A weird design, looks sort of crazy, looks futuristic, runs everything. Every kind of ammo. Not a single issue. And I have a blast shooting this thing. My shooting review is up on my channel. I absolutely love it. Glock 42 is my newest pocket pistol. Um, this has the least amount of rounds through it compared to any other pocket pistol, but it's been reliable. I've actually turned it into a pretty decent setup, 8 plus 1 to 380. Pretty decent, very light, very easy to conceal. You can throw the flush round mag in, or the flush 6 round mag in there, and it's even lighter. Um, the Ruger LCP Max, I love this thing, 10 plus 1 or 12 plus 1 with the mag that comes down to here. Um, it's been reliable for me, no complaints. The Diamondback DB9 Gen 4 is rare because it is a pocket pistol chambered in 9mm. Other than that, I think there's only the kel -Tec. Um, it's chambered in 9mm and a lot of people won't, aren't willing to go down to 380 even though there's great defensive rounds chambered in 380. Underwood makes the Extreme Defender. There's a lot of awesome solid projectile rounds out there that don't over penetrate um, and can be great in 380. But if you're looking for 9mm, it's been flawless. It's ran everything. I can't complain. The LCP. This is like $275. Once again, it's ran everything. This doesn't have a lockback feature on the last round, which threw me for a loop at first, but then I learned that. I'm always learning stuff in firearms. I'm not the best. I don't have all the knowledge. I'm constantly learning. And then I bring the stuff back to you guys here at this channel. Hopefully you guys can learn something. Also, the bodyguard. This is one of my newer additions, but I've shot it a lot recently. And this has been my carry for the weekend, right? Every weekend I take my kids to a new park. That's been our goal this summer. And we've done a great job at it. Some days we go to three new parks, which sounds crazy. But I just throw this in my pocket, throw an extra mag in the other pocket, and I feel good to go, right? You just got to practice with them. That is the biggest thing. One is learning to pocket carry. Learning how. Learning what kind of pants to use, what kind of shorts to use, what kind of pocket holsters to use. Use Vetter pocket locker holsters. They are the best. They are Kydex. You will never have an issue pocket carrying with a Kydex pocket holster from Vetter. That is my go-to. But it's been 100% reliable. You got to learn how to pocket carry. And you got to train with the firearm, right? That is the biggest thing. But what I'm learning about this year is this is going to be my year of malfunctions. This is going to be my year of issues with firearms. This is going to be my year of um, sending firearms back for repair, right? I've already had the Glock 28 have issues. My Canik Meta MC9 has had issues. Um, and now my Beretta Pico. This is a pocket pistol I picked up not too long ago. And... I got it, one, because it was used and for a great deal. Two, they don't make them anymore. Three, it's stainless steel. And if you know pocket carrying, um, your firearm gets moist. Um, you sweat, stuff like that, especially in the summer. You want something that is not going to rust, right? You just can't avoid that with pocket carry. Stuff like the LCP is pretty well known for rusting. Um, the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard is pretty good at not rusting. The Diamondback's been solid. The Taurus has actually been pretty great with not you know, getting marked up, no rust issues. 
But something stainless steel like this, I thought, hey, no rust, rust issues. Also, it is the thinnest 380 in production. Look at that. That is absolutely ridiculous. Here's the Smith & Wesson CSX. <laughs> Here's a Springfield Army Hellcat. It looks ridiculous almost how thin it is. But it basically is like throwing another wallet in your pocket. So that's why I love something like this. It does have a heavier trigger. And I should have been warned, right? The number one warning should have been a, a used Beretta Pico. You'd never see them anymore. You'd never see them, period. Um, it being used, maybe I shouldn't have got it. But I went for it and took that chance. And, you know, sometimes they work out, sometimes it doesn't. Two, the shape of it. It looks really weird. You can literally only get a finger and a half on that grip unless you use the extended mag, which I do have the extended mag, um, which is weird. It doesn't add capacity, but it does add length. But it is a 380, so these are very manageable when it comes to snappiness. The only time they're really that snappy is with defensive rounds. But other than that, they they just run, usually. And usually Brettas run, usually. In this case, it ran flawlessly, right? 100 rounds is actually pretty hard to get through these. Um, one, because they're smaller, so it's a little harder on your hands. But two, also you're loading mags so often, over and over and over again, right? And... I managed to get 100 rounds of ball ammo through this, right? And a couple mags of defense rounds. Not a single issue. And when I first got it, of course, I checked the internals. I made sure everything was clean, um, looked nice, nothing looked damaged, and it ran. But since then, I was messing around with snap caps the other week. And snap caps are a great tool, right? When I got my Taurus GX4, I brought it home. I was dry fire practicing with it. What I noticed is it had a delayed striker. My Taurus GX4, you'd pull the trigger and then 10, 20, 30, even 40 seconds later, then your striker would go. You know how scary that'd be if you're new to firearms, you're not as good with gun safety, you're at the range and you go, pull the trigger, right? Nothing happens. And then you make the dumb decision to point it a little this way or a little this way, or you're like, what is going on? It can be very dangerous. So snap caps are awesome. I love bringing them home, practicing with them, making sure the firearm is going to eject the round properly, extract the round, stuff like that. So I love messing around with them. And I was doing that with this Beretta. And what I realized is even training ammo replica snap caps were not feeding. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I cleaned it, lubed it up, and then they ran for a little bit. Now what I noticed after 30 rounds or so, it just, same thing. It kept getting hung up on this feed ramp. And I'm like, what is going on? So I look at the feed ramp. It's pretty well polished. It looks decent. Um, everything was lubricated. Everything was fine. It's like something is wrong with the guide rod or something is just snagging somewhere in this setup. Now, obviously, this is an older firearm. It was used. It could have been shot 100 times and sat on someone's safe for 10 years. You know, you, you don't know with a used firearm. Or it could have just been a lemon, so they got rid of it. And now I now own a Beretta lemon. And it is what it is. I have a bad feeling about this year being my year of malfunctions and issues like I was talking about. And this just added to them. So this is my third firearm that's going to be going back. Um, I'm pretty sure Beretta has good customer service, so I'm not too worried about it. But at the same time... Uh, that is the risk you take with used firearms, and that is the risk you take with stuff like this. Um, pocket pistols tend to be cheaper. Um, you know, like the LCP Max is like 350. The bodyguard's like 350. Um, you know, like the, like I said, the LCP is like 275. They tend to be cheaper. Um, this Beretta Pico I got used for like 250. So you never know. That's why you test your firearms and you vet your firearms. But this right here. Has actually made me not very happy because I love this thing. It is so light, so easy to carry, so easy to shoot. It does have a heavy trigger, but that just makes me feel better when I'm pocket carrying, to be honest, and I'm being active, that nothing in the world could accidentally pull that trigger. But like I said, this has been a lemon. So, anyways, guys, every other pocket pistol that I've showed you has ran flawlessly. It's just this, something is wrong with this Beretta. I'm not 100% sure. I just feel like the slide, whenever it goes back, it's not fully coming back it's being hung up on something because you can tell when it grabs around it is so slow when you shoot it on camera you can almost watch the slide go back and try and feed that ramp or feed that round and stop it is just something is not allowing it to have enough blowback and power to bring that round into the chamber so i am stuck with a lemon for now like i said an awesome shooter if yours is reliable awesome firearm you can't go wrong with it super light um, pocket pistol, very easy to carry, but for right now, I could never carry this. Um, it needs to go back to Beretta, and then once Beretta sent it back, I need to put 100, 150 rounds through it. I need to put some defensive rounds through it and make sure it's good to go. But I'm really confused why it ran solid at first, 
but it hasn't been running solid since. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out the channel. I appreciate it.